Hey guys, Chris here for The Process. I've been getting a few questions lately about the Spartan logo design challenge, why I use layer mask versus the screen or multiply function inside Photoshop. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. It's not as difficult as you think. Let's get to work in Photoshop. Okay, now the question you guys all had, why did I make this paint splotchy layer the way I did? And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. And I have a couple examples to share with you. The first one is just me doing what you would normally do. If I isolate or solo this layer, you can see it. And the way you solo it is you hold on option, you click on the eyeball. Be careful not to click on anything else or show any other eyeballs because then you'll have to manually go in and turn them all back on or off depending on what you have, okay? So I go and solo the layer, here's what's, what it is. It's a watercolor texture, you can even see the paper texture underneath that somebody made for us a long time ago. We do a lot of watercolor kind of storyboards, so we have a pretty good library of watercolor effects. And all I did there was to do multiply, and that's cool. Now that works for anything that's purely a grayscale image, and you can see that all the whites are ignored. It keeps all the black levels, and it just darkens the image underneath. But what I was saying on the, on the video was, I found a more efficient way and a more versatile way using textures that are not easy to cut out. And I'm gonna show you. So all I did was select all, I copy this file, I created a new layer, and I'm gonna fill this thing with black. Okay, I could be, you know what, let me make it a different color, let me make it blue so you guys can see this is the future blue color. And I'm going to add a layer mask, nothing fancy there. And the one trick here is you click on this layer, I'm sorry, you click on this layer, holding on option, and you paste it in there. So that same file has been copied and pasted into the mask. And I'm in the mask mode right now. And I'm gonna hit Command I, which will invert the file. You notice there, there's some edges here, and we can clean those edges up. I'll do it, it doesn't really matter for the look that we're going for, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can use the burn tool, which is, it's the O, because it looks like your hand. So the burn tool is O, and if you hold down Control Option, and you drag to the right or left uh, on your mouse or your tablet, you can make your brush size bigger or smaller. For something like this, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. The exposure is 50%, the mid-tones is what I'm focused on, and I can darken this really quickly. And for something like this, for most of the painting work I do, I prefer using a Wacom pen and tablet. Okay, so that will take care of most of the hard edges. I can go in there and get a little bit more aggressive. I told you there's a couple of ways of doing this. This is one way. The other way is use the brush tool. That's B for brush. And I've got a special brush here. I'm gonna switch to a more default brush, like something like this. Gonna make the brush bigger. And this time, instead of doing normal, I'm gonna to go to overlay and opacity. I'm gonna do it the same way, 50%. And by painting black in on these areas, I can darken it too. So it kind of works the same as the Dodge Burn Brush. And if you wanna make certain areas brighter or more contrasty, if you switch the colors, hitting, hitting X to switch the foreground and background color here, you can then go in. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger and I can just hit it. So you can see I'm not really painting white, I'm just using it almost as a dodge and burn brush, okay? So that's how you do that. The way you exit out of the mask mode is you hit option and just click on it. And it'll take you here. So now I have blue, okay? And now you can start to see a little bit why this is a little bit more versatile because we're not sure, like if I hit multiply on this, this is what it would look like. Let me turn off the bottom layer. So it has a different intensity of color and it's mixing with the background. And sometimes that's the preferred way to go. I'm just showing you alternatives and if you guys stick with me, you'll see why in some cases it helps to do it this way, the way I'm showing you, using a layer mask as opposed to using a transfer mode. Because well, that's how we set it up and that's how you can see that. So now you can see that this is on multiply. I'm gonna change it back to normal so you can see the differences. So you have the much more intense color and you can change the color easily by using the hue saturation tools, right? So now you can start to get some interesting looks. And you can do this in conjunction with the multiply. I'm not saying that you have to use one or the other, you can use both. So let's review what we got here. So we have a little bit of texture over the background and there's our guy. The reason why some of this has gone on a hero guy be is because he's multiplied, right? So this is how I got rid of this edge. He's on multiply, but when I added this texture on top, I added the screen on it. So that's how it erased part of that, okay. So now that's Hero Guy. Now I'm gonna show you a couple more examples where the using the layer mask is advantageous. Let me click on example two. All right, so on the left-hand side, I have one using multiply, 
And on the right hand side, I have one using the technique I just showed you. So I'm going to hide the guy for a second so you guys can see what's going on. And you can see there's some differences, some subtle differences. Right now, on the left side, it's multiply. On the right, it's just normal. And you can see there's a little bit different tonality. You can see there's a little bit more color variation. And it's not being influenced by the colors from underneath, which is what's happening on the left hand side. Now, you might say the left is cooler. And I wouldn't argue with you on that, but I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see a little bit of the differences. Let me hide this. Again, I hit tab to hide the palettes. And you can see that there are some differences. There's a, a little bit more three-dimensional quality to the image on the right because it's, it's keeping the highlights. That's what you're getting. When you do multiply, it's only going to darken the image underneath. And here, you can see a little bit of edge highlight here. And you can see on the left-hand side, there's almost a, like a brighter yellow color that's coming through. So that's one thing. So I'm going to create a new layer here. So there's a new layer. I'm going to hit G for gradient and D for default colors. And then I'm going to sw swipe out to the right here, just somewhere like that. Now you can see the real problem between the differences between the multiply, which is on the left, and the one that's using a layer mask. The layer mask, now you can really see the dimensionality that I'm talking about because it retains the highlights. It almost looks like there's a layer that's been crusted or caked over. You can see that um, very clearly now on the right hand side. The other cool thing about this is now, because it's on a dark background, you're getting both lights and darks coming through and not just the lights or the darks, okay? Because multiply only darkens the image underneath. It can't lighten it. All right, hoping, hoping that that makes more sense to you guys, okay? Hide that, hide this example there. And the last one I'm gonna show you is this one, which is really cool. All right, first, let me make this normal so you guys can see what this is. This is another one of those watercolor textures that we've built a while back, and it looks something like this. So here we got a lot of variation in tone. Uh, there's some weird things going on. It looks really cool, a bunch of different tones. So if I switch to multiply, you can see it. And that's pretty cool. And a lot of times I'll use it just like that, all right? Now, the difference between that and, say, this is not in day. Let me hide that. Now you're seeing, let me hide this, okay. Now you're seeing the deep kind of burnt umber color, this reddish color, and you see this faint kind of, uh, I don't know, how do you describe that, terracotta? And then you can see white. So this you can never achieve if you do multiply or screen. This is the way to achieve it. And I'm going to show you how to do that one more time. It's super easy, okay. All right, select all, copy, and then... Command J to duplicate it, create a layer mask, step into the layer mask by holding down an option and clicking on it, and then hitting Command V. Okay, so it pastes it in the exact same spot. And then this time I'm going to invert it, deselect it by Command D, invert the image because the whites we keep and the blacks we lose. Now we're going to go back out by clicking on the layer itself and not the layer mask. I'm going to hide this thing underneath. And now you can see this is set as normal with the layer mask. Now this is not very punchy because if I step into it, it only keeps what's truly white in the file right here and what's black, it makes it totally transparent. Well, I want to bring more of the original color and image through, so I've got to adjust this. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to step into the layer mask, hit Command L, I'm adjusting the mask and not the layer file itself, is I'm going to bring the whites in. Look what's happening there, you guys. See that? It's bringing the whites in and I want to keep the blacks, blacks, I'm going to bring the black point in and I'll adjust this left and right depending on how much transparency I want on the outer edge. So I feel like if I drag it too far to the left, all my white values and in, in the highlights get crushed and so it's being, it's acting like a little too opaque for my taste. I'm going to slide it to the right so I'm getting, a, oh that's look, looking good. Look in here you guys, so you can see deep dark reds and then this white kind of chalky, crusty little thing going on. I like that. So I'm going to hit OK. So this is the benefit of using a layer mask versus I'm moving around versus using a multiplier screen. So if I do multiply, this is what it would look like. This is going to be obvious. So no whites. You lose all of that cool stuff. And then if I do screen, I lose all the color and all the dark values. And so the way to do it and keep both is to do the, the technique I'm talking about. Hope I didn't belabor that point. Some of you guys are probably a little confused before and hopefully you're less confused now. And if not, you can ask for a full refund for this video. I hope that worked out for you guys. If you like more of these Photoshop tutorials, let me know. 
comment below and I'll do more of them.